Is my presentation on? Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon to all. So uh, the focus of my presentation will be on Brazilian South-South cooperation in health. I will try to explain what is distinctive about the approach of Brazil towards uh, South-South cooperation in health rather than speak about any particular project, though I will make reference to several of what I consider the most important projects in that sector. And I start by looking at Brazilian domestic health institutions and policies. And the reason I do that is that arguably, Brazilian South-South cooperation has been historically and traditionally based to a large extent on the successful policies and programs that are implemented domestically. So the, the, these programs are replicated in other countries, in partner countries, but they have already been tested and they had already succeeded, by and large, uh, in Brazil itself. And uh, health has also been a distinctive feature of Brazilian governance and democratization. The so-called sanitary movement was a, a wide-based social movement that promoted the principles of integrality and universality. And by that, I mean it defended a view of health that's holistic, that combines both prevention and treatment, and that defends universal and free uh, access to healthcare. And these principles were crucially incorporated in the Constitution in 1988, which created what we call the unified uh, health system. So, uh, a particularly important provision of this Constitution in what regards health and, and these, these principles of the sanitary movement is the one that provides uh, that health care is a right of the citizen and a duty of the state. Now, at the time that the Constitution came out and that the unified health system was created, it was a target of sharp criticism from a lot of foreign specialists and institutions. The World Bank, most notably, uh, wrote that this was not the way to go in what concerns uh, the creation of health systems in the developing world. The bank predicted an explosion of demand for healthcare services, which if provided free of cost, would eventually become unsustainable. However, uh, we have come a long way since then. It's been 30 years and the, surely the unified health system has its problems, but it's still there. And actually, I should also mention, there's no other country of a similar size that provides free and universal access to healthcare as, um, as Brazil does. So th this system is unique in its scale and um, in the universality that it offers. One particular area where Brazil has also been highly innovative and groundbreaking has been the treatment of HIV AIDS. Th the treatment program in Brazil following the constitutional provisions and the rights it affords it offers universal and free access to antiretroviral therapies. Again, this was a program that did exactly the opposite of what the conventional wisdom at the time, and particularly global and, and national health institutions such as the World Health Organization, the Pan American Health Organization, uh, the Gates Foundation, the World Bank, USAID, and others were telling developing countries they should do. The, the prescriptions all these organizations offered was focus all your scarce resources on prevention. Never mind treatment. Prevention is a lot more uh, cost effective. And this clearly was the agenda of the North. But Brazil did the exact opposite. It provided um, treatment and in the end this proved to be highly cost effective because the cost of providing drugs is a lot cheaper than the cost of hospitalization. So uh, these domestic developments in Brazil regarding health also were reflected in the country's foreign policy. Uh, arguably, health, uh, more than any other issue area, has been influenced by Brazil in, in, in terms of its global governance institutions. And we have several examples of that. The Global Fund, for instance, was uh, uh, highly influenced by the, the view of Brazil that treatment should be provided for diseases such as HIV AIDS, and also that generic drugs should be used for the purposes of providing this treatment. Brazil was a founding member of the, the fund, as it was of Unit Aid, which is another uh, in global health agency that provides funding for projects to fight not just HIV AIDS, but also other diseases, and uh, Brazil was also very influential there. 
uh, is several of the leaders of Unit 8 are Brazilian, including the current one, Celso Morin, is a former Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Brazil. And uh, the first meeting of Unit 8 outside of Geneva was actually held in, in Brasilia as well, which speaks to the influence the country had there. Uh, Brazil has also mobilized regionally to, to defend its health views, particularly in the ambit of the Union of South American Nations, where it created the South American Health Council, which uh, has formed a sort of a coalition to act in the World Health Organization and in other forms, and also the South American Institute for Health Management, which is headquartered in Rio de Janeiro. And actually, this defense of certain health principles have gone as far as the, the trade regime, the WTO, particularly with what has to do with TRIPS intellectual property rights. There, Brazil has also defended that patent rights should not prevent countries from def defending their own public health systems, and particularly from providing access uh, to essential medicines to all. This v debate has also, was also taken by Brazil and other countries such as India to the ambit of the World Health Organization, despite the opposition of the U.S. and other high-income countries that argued that intellectual property rights are not the mandate of the World Health Organization and that the, the, the WHO has no competence to deal with um, issues relating to these rights. Nonetheless, several resolutions were approved in the WHO that ensure the rights of developing countries to defend their, their public health and to ensure access to medicines uh, in the wake of TRIPS. So uh, th this is also obviously reflected in the South-South cooperation in health that Brazil provides, this particular view of health and these particular policies and programs that have been implemented at the domestic realm. So South-South cooperation in health has been a part of what has come to be known in the country as a health diplomacy and has also constituted arguably a very important foreign policy tool. And the emphasis here in, in South-South cooperation in health from Brazil has been on the so-called social determinants of health. And once more, this is a very different view from the view of the high-income countries and particularly the U.S. These countries focus primarily, when they, they're concerned about global health, on uh, di disease control, right? And, and solving particular health issues and not uh, the, the, the social determinants of health uh, themselves as, as Brazil has. Health has also been innovative as a sector of South-South cooperation in Brazil because it actually was the area where the term structuring cooperation was coined originally and later it was also applied to other sectors but, uh, but area, uh, the area where it emerged first was health. This is a concept that was coined by Fiocruz which is a major uh, lab and research center of the Ministry of Health in Brazil in 2009, it emerged as a critique of the dominant model of international health cooperation as being uh, too passive in what regards the roles of recipient countries and as promoting a vertical transfer of know-how of best practices and of resources from the north to the south. So uh, uh, this critique in particular looked at how there's a lack, uh, there used to be a lack of involvement, ownership and influence of recipient countries in, in the process of uh, international development cooperation in health. Uh, and obviously, this cooperation almost always reflected the views, the agendas, and the priorities of donors, such as the one I mentioned before, focusing on uh, prevention rather than treatment, which is clearly a view and an agenda from the North. Uh, many African countries, for instance, at the time had about one-fifth of its population, of its economically active population infected with HIV AIDS. And for those countries saying that they should just focus on prevention and let this huge par portion of their population die is obviously highly problematic. But this is just an example. There's sev several others. Uh, according to the critique, too, the traditional model of international cooperation in health tended to neglect the deeper causes of health problems. And to, to tackle these causes, it would be necessary to look at the social determinants of health, uh, as well as to take a holistic approach towards the shortcomings of uh, national health systems. Eventually, the critique would say, the dominant model would not be sustainable nor transformative, because 
its effects would only operate during the duration of the project, and typically once the, the project was over, the donor would withdraw, and the, the recipient country would go back to the situation that, where it was before regarding the, the, the particular health problem, or even worse, it could go to, to a, a situation that's inferior to the previous one when the projects were actually counterproductive. So, uh, based on this critique, the concept of structuring cooperation is one that defends a more holistic, long-term, and transformative development uh, projects. And these projects should be fundamentally based on the capacitation of partner human resources as well as their institutions. So the focus here is very much on the capacitation and a long-term view. I quote here one of uh, the main individuals that participated in elaborating this new concept and in putting it into practice, Paulo Bus. According to him, structuring cooperation in health is targeted towards full institutional development of partners' health systems based on rights, universality, comprehensiveness, quality, and equity. In order to do so, it seeks to build a capacity and generate local knowledge as well as promote a dialogue between actors so as to lead to processes in the health sector and build a policy and technical agenda that is appropriate to sectorial development. Thank you. Uh, according to another author, Almeida, there are five strategic guidelines for structuring cooperation in health. The priority of horizontal cooperation. So the, the approach here would be not as the traditional model had it, uh, to, to focus on specific diseases or health problems, but rather at the integral development of health systems. Focus on capacitation and building capacities, not just individual, but collective and, and institutional. Uh, regional coordination of initiatives, as I have also mentioned, the involvement of health ministers as key actors and in, in key structuring institutions, but also uh, a close relationship between the ministries of health and the ministries of foreign affairs and the provision of South-South cooperation. So I, I give a few examples of structuring projects in Brazilian South-South cooperation in health. Uh, a lot, lots of them have to do with the very structure, framework, and governance of the unified health system because other countries have supposedly a lot to learn from Brazilian experience in that regard. But I have also spoken about HIV AIDS control and how that was groundbreaking in, in Brazil. And we have projects there as well, most notably the, the building of an antiretroviral factory in Maputo, Mozambique. There's also others related to vaccination, fam family health strategy, which is a system that monitors family in poor communities and ensures that, that uh, their health is, is in good shape. Uh, People's Pharmacy Program is one that provides affordable medicines, again, to, to poor populations. And the Human Milk Bank Program, which is one of the most prominent ones, actually was cited this morning, uh, as we'll see. But there are a number of other projects that, while not strictly speaking, belonging in the sector of health, also have to do with health and have a significant impact in health, such as Zero Hunger Program, the Bolsa Familia, which is a cash transfer program, and um, a number of others that have to do with family farming as well. So these are examples of health cooperation practices of Fiocruz, which is arguably the most important institution to provide Brazilian South-South cooperation in health. And we can see that most of the partner countries come from Latin America, but Africa also figures prominently here. And uh, the, the project that has the most number of partner countries is the human milk banks. Uh, if we look here at examples of other Brazilian health cooperation practices, we, we get a sense of the scope of these practices, right? They go from regulation of private health insurance to mental health issues to uh, uh, bone marrow transplants and the like. There are a number of different agencies of the government that are involved that are shown here in the third column. And uh, this first slide focuses on Latin America, but again, the, the most number of partner countries are in Latin America. And as the following slide shows, Africa also figures prominently. There's a few projects with Asia and the Pacific that have to do also with uh, health insurance. Let me talk briefly about the challenges of Brazilian structuring cooperation in health. As you know, um, when we talk about development, there's always a, a downside involved as well, and we shouldn't neglect that. Now, the, the first one has to do with the fact that a lot of these policies and institutions in, uh, that, were, that worked very well in the health sector in Brazil did so because in this country there was a significant mobilization and organization of civil society 
to provide political support for these policies and these institutions. Now, it might be very difficult to replicate this elsewhere. For instance, in African countries, when a lot of the affected groups by different health problems such as HIV AIDS are disenfranchised and where there is no similar political support from uh, civil society and other groups domestically. A second challenge has to do, has to do with the fact that uh, Structuring health projects, because of their scope, their ambition, and the fact that they're long-term projects, they require very deep knowledge of the realities of partner countries. And oftentimes, Brazil does not have that knowledge. It's particularly when we're speaking about projects that have a lot of partner countries, it is difficult to get uh, an adequate appreciation of the realities of each country involved, and that might be a problem. A third challenge has to do with evaluation concerns. Because they're long-term, structuring projects in health do oftentimes do not follow the same time frame as evaluation other projects do, right? And because they also very much focused on capacitation, that also provides more challenges for evaluation. Clearly, capacitation